Hi, welcome to this demo of Spectrum Protect Operation Center version 8.1.10 and the new retention set tape volume management feature. This feature is going to help manage the retention tape movement between the library, off-site locations, and then the return back on site for restore or return to the scratch pool. Now, if you're familiar with disaster recovery media management, which has been in Spectrum Protect for a long time, this will look a lot like that, and it does follow that form, but it is separate from our DRM piece. Now, retention set tapes are the first delivery in the operations center for this type of off-site tape management. So in this demo, I'll be walking you through how to utilize the operations center to do things like change the state of the media, how to set the DRM vault name and courier name and DRM not mountable name. So for dated, they're originally going to be checked into the library and either filling or full. And at that point, they would be mountable. Now we can change their status to things like either not mountable, showing that they've been checked out of the library and maybe are sitting in the IO slot, or courier status, meaning they're with some type of courier or vault status, showing that they've been taken to the off-site Iron Mountain or other tape retention location. When it's time to bring those volumes back on site, perhaps for a restore or for on-site reclamation, or to put them back in scratch tape, we can change the status of those volumes to courier retrieve and then on-site retrieve, or in the case of our retention set tapes, we can use this new state of restore only, showing that we've just brought them back on site to do a restore for them. We want to leave them in read only status because we don't want to add any new retention sets to those tapes. Now, all of these states are optional. You can, for instance, go from mountable direct to vault, direct back to on site retrieve, and the whole process is optional as well. And remember, you can also do all of these commands utilizing your normal DRM scripts if you already have those out there. You can simply plug in our new features, which include the move rep media, query rep media, and restore only portion. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and take a look at how this works in the operations center. In the operations center, under services, retention sets, and then details, inside the volumes for this retention set, we can see this specific retention set volume is currently in the mountable state and it is currently filling. If we go back into services retention sets, at this retention set level, we can choose to move media for all of the tapes associated with that retention set. And in this case, it's just one. We can choose our destination media state and set it as either vault, mountable, courier, or restore only. Vault, mountable, and courier will all issue a checkout of the volume. And it's up to the customer on which state they want. We see a lot of customers just going directly to the vault state and kind of skipping the other two. Notice when you choose Vault, you will automatically see a location filled in. If you want to customize that location so that each time it comes up with a location specific to your environment, from the command builder, you could issue a query DRM status, and that will show you what the not mountable location, courier, and vault site name are currently set to. If you want to set the DRM vault name to something specific, you'll issue set DRM vault name. If you want to set the DRM courier name, you'll issue set DRM courier name. And if you want to set the DRM not mountable name, you can do that also. You'll now see those show up as the default. Now, when you go back into the retention sets, and choose to do a move media, choose the vault status that the location that we just entered with the set command shows up automatically. Now, of course, you can still edit this and type in whatever you want, but it's nice to have the default show up. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and click move media. The move media command shows up as successfully issued. And now when we drill down into this retention set and look at the volumes, 
you'll see that it's going into checking out. And as soon as the checkout from the library is complete, it'll change to vault. Now in your IT center at this point, somebody would physically take that volume out of the IO station and send it out to the Iron Mountain. So now some time has passed, the original backup volumes have expired off their primary storage. And when a user goes to issue a restore from a volume that is off site, that user is going to get an error that says that volume cannot be accessed because it's off site. Likewise, the Spectrum Protect Administrator would see an ANR1422W message where it said read access denied for volume such and such. And if the administrator had set up an alert on the ANR1422W, they would know it was time to bring that volume back on site. At which time they could go to the client, so let's assume it was this client, Anise, and they could go into Anise's retention sets and choose the retention set that was specific to the time frame that they were trying to restore from. If they drill down into storage storage pools, they will see the details on the retention pool. And of course, they can drill down and look at the specific volumes for that pool. The name of the volume should correspond with the volume label that was in the ANR1422W message. So they can then click on that and then click Move Media. This time, the choices that they're going to have going from the vault state is either the on-site retrieve or the courier retrieve. They choose to put it into on-site retrieve and can enter location information for that. There is no set command to pre-fill that information. Next, pay attention to the warning that says if you're bringing this back on site, you probably want to put it into a retention hold. And the reason for this is we don't want, by some chance, the retention set to expire while it's waiting to be brought back on site. So acknowledge that you read this. Mind you, this does not automatically put it into a retention hold. That is a separate step the administrator would have to do on their own. All this is doing is acknowledging that you should do that. And then go ahead and click Move Media. Now you'll see that volume is in the on-site retrieve status. Okay, so some time passes. The couriers bring those volumes back on site. And now the administrator is ready to move them into the library. So at this point, the administrator will do another move media. This time they are given the option to put it into restore only, vault, not mountable, or courier. We're going to put it into restore only, which will check in the volume, change it into a read only status. It's important to have it in a read-only status because we don't want other retention sets written out or mixed in with this current retention set. We will enter a location. There is not a set command for this location either. And then we'll go ahead and click on Move Media. You'll get the confirmation that the request was successful. And now when you look at that volume, the media status has been updated to checking in because we're actually running a check-in libvol against that volume. And once the check-in is complete, it will be restore only. So at this point, the administrator could let the Spectrum Protect client know that their volume is back on site and they can go ahead with their restore. This example was simple because it was only one volume. Let's switch over to another operation center and look at a retention storage pool that has multiple retention sets and many volumes associated with those. So if we go into this storage pool, we can see the different volumes out there underneath the volumes tab. You'll notice these volumes are in all different states. Some are mountable, some are vault, some are going to be restore only. You'll also notice underneath the retention set column, some of these tapes have multiple retention sets on it. So here we can see the retention set number associated and stored on that tape. In fact, we can click through and actually see 
the properties and the volumes that that retention set is written across. Following our previous example, if we had brought these tapes back on site to do a restore from and mark them restore only, but now we wanted to send them back off site, the first thing we could do is the move media. We can go in and then mark them in vault. So some of these retention sets will have a lot of volumes associated with them. And one thing you can do is export the list of volumes to a file. Then you could email this file to your courier and they could make sure they picked up that list of tapes. And now we can go ahead and mark these tapes that we had originally brought back online to do a restore from back as vault and we can start the whole cycle again. So we'll go ahead and click move media. So in summary, I've shown you how you can customize and utilize the new retention set tape volume management features inside of the operations center. Thank you very much.